Welcome everyone to the Faroe Islands. It's Dana. We just finished up our trip in Iceland and are now headed to the Faroe Islands. Located in the North Atlantic, the Faroe Islands are situated in between Iceland, the UK, and Norway. It's a territory that's part of the Kingdom of Denmark, but is also a self-governing nation and remains autonomous. We've always heard about how stunning the nature is here, filled with landscapes that don't exist anywhere else in the world. This unique group of islands may be small and you may have never heard of it until this video. Trust me though, this hidden gem is just waiting to be discovered. Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Let's Just Go Travel. We have arrived here in the Faroe Islands. So we were in Iceland earlier today and we got on a plane and it took about an hour and a half to fly over to here, the Faroe Islands. Super easy flight. I wish all flights that we ever took were that short because that was awesome. <laughs> but yeah, we are really, really excited to be here. This is going to be the next part of our awesome adventure here in this side of Europe. If and it's nice to us and weather. Yeah, yeah. So far the weather is not super amazing. It's cloudy and really foggy. We're hoping it kind of picks up a little bit. And yeah, we're gonna spend nine days here and see everything that Faroe Islands has to offer. As you can see, we are not in a camper van anymore. We're just in a regular old dinky little car because Faroe Islands is actually not that big. You can drive from one side to the other in a relatively short amount of time. So we've basically just gone a regular car and we got an Airbnb that we're gonna stay at and gonna kind of mix it up a little bit in terms of our style of travel here, right? It should be really, really interesting and let's go on an adventure, huh? <laughs> So landing in the Faroe Islands was pretty weird. Probably the weirdest landing experience we've ever had. It basically felt like there was never ending clouds and clearly fog and all of a sudden we were like basically on the ground. Like the last minute finally cleared up and we could see ground. It was like kind of freaky. Yeah, the landing was rough. And the landing was rough. It sounded as if it like they needed to slow down like really fast. Yeah. But yeah, it's a tiny airport. Yeah. Faroe Islands is not a big place or anything like that. So yeah, definitely changing it up from where we just were in Reykjavik. But we're super stoked. Like I've seen a lot of really cool photos on the Faroe Islands and they have some landscapes here that you can't see anywhere else. They just look incredible. So we're hoping we get lucky to be able to see that it's not foggy the whole time. So yeah. <laughs> we'll see how nice of a drive it is to get to our Airbnb. Our Airbnb is actually not on this island. We actually have to drive through our first tunnel and it's a paid tunnel. Yes. Yeah, so Faroe Island is full of these what are called subsea tunnels. They're basically tunnels that go under the ocean and they just kind of get you from one like clump of islands to another. Faroe Islands is just kind of made up of a whole bunch of different islands all kind of connected together by these tunnels and you got to pay to go through these tunnels. We got about a 45 minute drive to our Airbnb. We're headed to the main town here called Torshavn. I think is the name. So let's see how it goes. which yeah. is nice but at the same time like you can just see to other islands and other areas and there's like fog and clouds so it's yeah. like I really think it's gonna be like totally different in every single spot so hopefully pick and choose what we do on each day according to the weather uh, first impressions very nice yeah, very, very beautiful here beautiful. The landscapes are cool we see tons of waterfalls and lots of green and yeah being able to see like all these islands in the distance and stuff is it's, it's nice so far. Yeah. Alrighty, we are about to pull into our Airbnb. Ah, uh, this. Ah, uh, I see. Is there multiple in here? I think so, yeah. I don't think it's up. Usually it's a down. There we go. <laughs> 
Oh, wow. All right, that's it. Let's go for a little walk around. <laughs> so welcome to the Faroe Islands. Uh, Dana's just getting some stretching done on the ground there because we've been sitting a lot over the last little while. Oh, my back hurts. Yeah. But yeah, not a bad place. It's very modern. It's got a pretty big kitchen, as you can see. Nice to have a fully stocked and fully equipped kitchen after our van experience. We're just gonna kind of just get settled in. We have a whole bunch of laundry to do, so. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna get going on some laundry and we also need to go and load up a whole bunch of groceries because having a whole big kitchen, gonna be making some good meals here. So yeah, we're gonna get that figured out. Let's do it. The city of Torshan is the largest in all the Faroe Islands and is also the capital city. Founded in the late 9th century by Vikings, this coastal town has grown to become the home of almost half the population in all the Faroe Islands. It has all the amenities of a modern city that you would expect and serves as a good base point to explore the rest of the islands. Alrighty, we are at a bonus. It's like a big grocery chain store. But yeah, let's go check it out. Of course. What? what Taco, sour Jesus. cream, and onion. What is? What are these? Should we try this? Alrighty, we are done our grocery shopping. About two hundred dollars Canadian, all said and done. So for it's alright for for one week. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm just too used to expensive groceries now, but that is a lot. <laughs> Put all of our wonderful food away. We're stocked for the nine days that we're gonna be here. And it's time to do all of our laundry from Iceland. <laughs> it's basically the same time. Yeah, <laughs> we have so much laundry from Iceland that we weren't able to do before we left. That's van life. We are in the car. We are driving to what we're hoping is our first activity of the trip. We're kind of playing today by ear because I think we're both kind of feeling a little bit nervous and anxious, mainly just because of the weather. Like the weather is beautiful where we are, but we hear so much about how the Faroe Islands could be beautiful one second and then pouring rain the next second and then back to fog or whatever you know what I mean like it could be like you could see all the weathers in one day but anyways we are going to probably one of the furthest islands on the Faroe Islands all the way up north and yeah again we're crossing our fingers that there is no fog or rain because they recommend if there is fog on the mountain that you're going to climb to not do it because it can be pretty dangerous and plus you wouldn't see anything and you wouldn't see anything so yeah let's cross our fingers and hopefully we can kind of get over our anxiety of the weather and yeah, have a great time here in the Faroe Islands. We just stopped at a bank to get money from the ATM. You have to pay to do the hike that we want to do. Doing some of these hikes in Faroe Islands is not cheap. So we, the hike that we're hoping to do today it costs about 200 krona, I think is the name of the currency here, which for us is like 40 bucks. And like, you ever heard of paying $40 to do a hike? Like that's pretty crazy. Even in a national park back anywhere in Canada or US, you would never pay $40 to enter a national park. And even if you did enter a national park, you get to do all the hikes, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is one hike for $40, <laughs> not guided or anything. I just think that's kind of crazy, but hopefully worth it. All right, you guys, so our luck, I think for this trip is gonna be very hit and miss. So as soon as we went through and made it to the other side of the other t of the last tunnel, basically the island that we're doing the hike on, it is like complete fog. <laughs> it's not a great start. <laughs> yeah. It looks like higher up it might be clear because I can see the tops of the mountains and like I can see blue sky. This might just be really low fog. Maybe it was just that area. Maybe. It is clearing. I don't know. It, is clearing. it is clearing. Look at it. It's okay. way clearer now. It could have been just that one spot. I don't know. I'm just, like... I'm, just I'm so anxious about this yeah. weather. It's so weird. All 
Alrighty, we're gonna go for it. I mean, this side looks awesome, but the fog is, the rolling, fog in. is rolling in towards this section, so we have to kind of just hurry. But I don't know, we're here, we're gonna do it. Hopefully it works out okay. Let's get going. All right, we have started the trail. We paid the gate entry fee. There's and we're just, a guy there. There's a guy there that we're just talking to him like, oh, what do you think about the fog and stuff? And he made a joke saying he has stopped making promises about what the fog's gonna do to people. But he did tell us that this morning it was incredibly foggy here and you couldn't see anything. So at least we have some bit of view. But we're gonna start now. We're gonna do this. It's already uphill, it's already hard. So, but like, look behind me. Like, that's freaking amazing. So, let's do this. You good? Yeah, my calves are burning. <laughs> There's fog rolling kind of right across us here. And the very top of the peak is completely covered in fog at the moment and it hasn't really been clearing. So probably not sure if we're gonna get all the way to the top. Honestly, I think that's something that you have to just, you know, accept when you're here in the Faroe Islands is you get what you get. Fog will roll in and then it'll clear up and then the fog will roll back in and then maybe it'll clear back up, but. Yeah, the fog has really, really rolled in now. I'm glad I got the drone up and got some of it before it really covered everything up. It's crazy how fast things can change. Like literally when we were at the bottom starting, it was just super sunny and I thought it was gonna be awesome. But now that we're like halfway up, it's all gone. <laughs> Alright you guys, Mike made the decision. We're calling it. <laughs> We've been here for a while and I just feel like we waited at this spot and we were waiting at another spot and nothing has changed. It's a little unfortunate for our first trail here in the Faroe Islands, but I will be honest, this area is still beautiful and we did get to see some of it. So, I'm trying to look at the positives. As we headed back into the city, we decided to check out a couple gift shops to see if we could find a nice souvenir. We're always on the lookout to add to our magnet collection and ended up at the Torshan Visitor Center where we found one that gave us a little preview of tomorrow's activity. We're really excited about this one. We also hit up a local bakery, which was delicious and headed back to our Airbnb to end off day two. See you all tomorrow.
We arrived at the hike starting point in the village of Sorvagar and were happy to see that the weather was holding up. We met up with our guide as well as the rest of the hiking group before setting off. The hike itself is about 11 kilometers round trip and takes you along the coast of Vagar Island to the viewing point of the Dranganir Sea Stacks. Along the way, our guide told us many fun facts about the Faroe Islands. Did you know that in World War II, the Faroe Islands were actually occupied by the British Army? Because of the location of the islands, it was strategically important for the British to maintain a base of operations here. During this time, the Faroese people and the British soldiers maintained very good relations and there were even marriages between soldiers and Faroese locals. The main industry here in the Faroe Islands is salmon fishing and is home to the eighth largest salmon fishing operation in the whole world. Not bad for a little island. Another fun fact is that there are actually more sheep than people here. Sheep farming is also a big industry here and serves as an important part of the natural ecosystem. They even help with trimming the grass on people's houses as many houses here have their entire roofs covered in it. After a couple hours of hiking, we finally arrived at the main event and the stunning sea stacks appeared in front of us. everyone that was an interesting hike a lot uh longer than we probably would have taken if it was just us two <laughs> but yeah, this so. place holy cow we are so lucky to get this sort of weather because our guide was telling us that like it's like once a week once they get a week nice... they get this kind of weather and we're mm. only here for a week and a half so the fact that we got to be here on the one day on the one day this is mind-blowing like th these landscapes are so cool to see yeah and like worth the hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> and like fun fact when we first got here uh the guy just kind of gathered everybody and like one of the first things he said was oh you're not allowed drones here and then like you could just see on like my mine and like a ton of other people's faces like <sighs> but then <laughs> funny because last night i had gotten on whatsapp with like the owner of the hiking company just because their their phone number was like on their website and it's like if you have any questions just like call this guy and i added him on whatsapp just to see if he had it and he did and i just kind of asked him like hey like our drones allowed i just want to be prepared i don't want to bring it for nothing and then he told me yes you can with a couple of restrictions like you can only fly here at the end of the trail and um, like don't get too close to the arch because that's where all the birds are and stuff and then so I had that text message basically of him saying that like you're allowed to and then when our guide today said oh you're not allowed to I was like well that's kind of confusing and I pulled out my phone and said but like the guy last night who was essentially our guide's boss said I was allowed to so it's kind of confusing he was like oh really so he called him and then said oh sorry like I got it wrong apparently you are now allowed to because before you weren't due to all the birds nesting here and they didn't want to disturb all the baby birds apparently now they're all fully grown so he basically gave him the okay and then the guy turned to all of us again and said oh sorry i got it wrong you are allowed to and then all of our faces just lit up just like wow amazing we totally can <laughs> so it's been great we got some really really nice stuff and we're gonna go get some more right now we're just kind of scaling down to the most bottom part of it and yeah let's get some more awesome footage but like look at that like that's craziness <laughs> All right, you guys, so we are back at the Airbnb. Dana made us some awesome pasta. But yeah, I think we are going to call it for this episode. Definitely turned around our start to the Faroe Islands here because yeah, as you saw on you know our first day here when we hiked up that mountain and got no view basically once we got up to the top. But today, today was good. But yeah, join us as we continue our exploration of the Faroe Islands. We are going to try to hit up more hikes and hopefully the weather stays good, but we'll see. Everything here is pretty random for that. <laughs> but in any case, we're having a really, really great time and it's awesome here. But with that guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike. I'm Dana. Or let's just go travel and we'll see you guys on the next adventure. I found my way, I found my way. I was in the dark against it all, but made it through the day. Cause I found my way, I found my way. In bad times, I know I'll be.